Hey guys, this is Anon, and it is time to talk about the OBJ263. I've uh, been working towards this video, had a lot of requests for it, um, because honestly this tank has been uh, pretty fantastic since its release. Um, I really am hoping that since it's Russian, it's we're not going to see a nerf on it, because wow, this thing can really sling the damage. Um, it is, I wouldn't call it uh, OP necessarily, because there are, even though it's got some really nice frontal armor, there are plenty of weak spots, uh, both through the mantlets, uh, through the lower glacius, uh, also the sides, you really can't angle this tank or you're, you can get penned uh, through the sides pretty easily if you're not careful. Um, but so much other uh, versatilities, uh, especially for the people that don't really love uh, turtless TDs, which is myself included, uh, this thing has a lot of versatility to it. So uh, start jumping right into some gameplay and you looking at uh, the tank layouts right on the offset I saw no mediums on red whatsoever so I decide to go ahead and do a full speed flank uh, running this thing over 40 kilometers an hour for a lot of the path uh, lets me really kind of book around and there I mean no one wants to see this tank show up on the flank it's just so so strong so uh, run smack into an E75. It's not really what I wanted to see. I was hoping to go ahead and, and flip around and shoot right into their backs. Um, but this tank, because of its really strong uh, you know, frontal armor, uh, as long as you can keep that lower plate protected, uh, it really brawls well. If you're close up and can keep it jiggling around, um, it ha tanks have a really, really hard time uh, penning that mantlet as long as you keep moving. Uh, so I'm going to get right up in his face for the most part. I should have gone straight for the face hug, but like I said, that angling has an issue. And I was worried that Yagtiger was going to wake up, which he does. So now I ha just have to keep uh, in mind that I need to keep my front uh, as forward as possible. So that's kind of the goal here and just work the E75. Get a little bit of RNG rolls here every once in a while, but you know it loads so fast. There's just nothing that can out DPM you. Uh, it will just tear through tanks. So E with the E75 dispatched, I can work ahead towards the Yag Tiger, and you can see where I've managed to get a couple track shots, a few bounces, and after facing a heavy face-to-face, -face, uh, have zero damage at this point, so I can keep going. I uh, got a little bit of gun bounce, and then you can see that shot come in from the left, uh, which is exactly what I was saying you have to be careful of with that... Um, with that side armor being really really weak so uh, take a couple shots here because that's a that's a much stronger gun uh, than what i was facing the e75 so now i can turn in and uh, work some shots here get an unfortunate bounce but again with that reload uh, there's a lot of tanks uh, especially heavies and tds aren't going to be able to get out of the way of your shells uh, with that uh, that quick DPM and reload time, so it makes it really really versatile, and also the traverse speed really lets you kind of come around a corner and whip in uh, and get shots before they really have time to aim on you, which is what I was shooting for. So, got it down to a three versus three situation. Uh, lose another tank here, but I want to get a couple quick shots in the E100 uh, since his traverse speed is slow. I can pop one in and kind of trying to run off, uh, but since he moved, couldn't get it. C taking a couple blind shots on the tortoise and unfortunately he gets my gun there. Um, but I'm just kind of keeping an eye on how the other two are pushing. I decide I don't really like that situation, so decide to kind of flip around and go for the flank here. I know I can take probably two shots. The E100 might be able to one-shot me, but uh, trying to... Uh, I figure I can outmaneuver him a little bit and keep that from happening. Uh, teammate dies, so now one versus three situation, but we've got him nice and whittled down. The E100 is a little bit nervous, and he's trying to flank, uh, so I really want to get the bigger gun of the tortoise out of the way. I'm keeping an eye on the E100 as he's circling around, so now it's just important to me to kill this tortoise as fast as possible, because uh, the E100 is going to be coming around for the flank. So come in here, you can see he gets the bounce because he get in there close. Uh, that mantlet, you know, is just troll enough to really mess with people. And uh, unless you can get a clean shot into it, it, it you're going to get a lot of ricochets, which is nice. All right, so now I'm a one shot if the E100 gets a clean clean hit in. Uh, this is also when I just now noticed that it's uh, <laughs> I'm going for the Racinia here, which is always exciting. Um, but now I just really need to play with this E100 a bit. Um, I, any clean shot of me is done, and he is a two shot. So this is when you're always in a disadvantage with the, the turretless TDs, but I'm trying to set up in ways just to kind of protect that lower plate. Um, since he doesn't show up there, I, I'm a little worried he's flanking around. 
and the last thing I can let happen is for him to see my cider back because I'll be a one shot. So um, peeking up just to get an idea because I have a lot of protection in this no matter what. He's not there, but I'm kind of holding out, and I'm not sure where he, and he's going to be, and that's when he shows up. I don't have the gun depression to get this uh, to get this cannon down, so I'm just kind of keeping an eye on him, seeing where he's going to go. This isn't really the side I would like to have this uh, battle take place because uh, it's unlikely I'm going to kill him in one shot. But you know, I'm it, with this angle and what's happening here. I'm hoping he's going to poke out, give me a free shot, so I can track him and then roll back at an angle so he won't get a clean shot. If I can get a track, unless he heals it instantly, I should be able to get an, a reload in uh, because of this this reload time. So he doesn't like that situation, so switches around to the other side. Uh, this is not the, a normal TD, so it lets me traverse and whip around uh, to kind of set up for the shot APCR because I really want the hit. Uh, he tries to get a snapshot on me and bounces because that is just not as accurate of a gun. And I have him on reload, but he gets away enough where... You know, I don't want to turn the corner and give it up because now I just need him to make a mistake. Uh, these are situations, obviously, uh, a lot of people struggle with. It's easy to make a mistake and lose the game or get nervous, but I've got a minute 15. Totally okay with slow playing it, plus it lets me talk about the tank a little bit more. So again, whip around because I'm pretty sure he's going to attack this direction the next time because it didn't work the other side for him last time. Can just kind of set up don't want to overexpose anything but just looking for that lower plate and there it is for for uh, the nice uh, win there so uh, this tank is just so versatile I mean you can handle it like a medium without a turret and uh, the flipping around at traverse speed is really what let me uh, kind of pull off that uh, Koblenov situation at the end uh, and obviously it, it can really just farm some damage so uh, we're gonna move on to one more game here to continue and just kind of show some of the highlights of this tank, um, switching over to Himmelsdorf, uh, it's I don't think it's really any secret uh, that both of these games are more flat maps. Uh, the Russian TDs are, are notorious for having no gun depression, and uh, and as long as this tank is, you're really not going to be able to work hills very much. Uh, you can do it at some distance with uh, its respectable camo um, and kind of pop a few of those shots, but as soon as you're spotted, uh, you're going to have to you know, roll down those that hill because you just uh, you can't uh, really hold down off hills. You're really looking to more hold down off you know edges of ridge lines or off of um, yeah, off hard cover, things like that. So, of course, we want to keep it protected, but in general, I am personally running this tank with mediums. Uh, if I have to run it with heavies, it's fine. You can be that second line supporter um, because you've got the armor that you don't have to, to necessarily snipe the whole game. Um, but this tank with its speed uh, in a pack of mediums is extremely devastating uh, just because you can uh, really whittle down the, the HP of, of red mediums. So, so that's kind of what we're doing. Uh, the Pershing pops up. I've got plenty of support. There's some of my team is moving slowly, but that's okay. You can see the quick bounce I get off of the Pershing because he doesn't have time to, to aim at that lower plate. And you know, right off the bat, we're up a tank. Uh, it's amazing uh, just how f fast this thing can uh, kind of evaporate hit points. So I can be a little bit more aggressive with it. I haven't seen any heavies. Um, there the Panzer shows up, so I'm just kind of being careful with angles here. The E50 ran, uh, so I'm assuming he doesn't have a ton of help, um, even though the Leo one you know, kind of shows up there a little bit. But again, just kind of working the angles. Uh, not overexposed, but at a distance, um, even with the weaker lower plate, it's it's going to get quite a few bounces um, because it's just uh, it's a small target to aim for. So uh, continuing to work. Um, Pretty sure my camo is reset here enough that uh, the Jagdpanzer or er, the yeah, doesn't know I'm here, so I can pop up and get a couple shots in, uh, go for the tracking shot to help our mediums, and now I'm rolling back behind the the overturned crane car to give myself some cover. And now's when I can just kind of wait and watch for him to take shots, peek back out. I know he's. Uh, I've got plenty of time to roll back because of the reload times. And now just scooting for because I know if I move up, my lower plate's pretty protected. Uh, 
because of the angles, so I can get a shot in. Unfortunately, it bounces, but it was still a pretty good tactic to take with him. It was going to be difficult for him to, to pen my front from that angle. So I uh, can continue moving around. Uh, pretty much everybody's uh, been spotted at some point now, so we kind of have a pretty good idea where red is, all very spread out. Uh, trying to get rid of this big gun on the 704, because uh, an HE shell to my side or back would be pretty difficult if I ignored him. And now with the, the lineup that's left, it lets you pretty well charge. I mean, I play this tank really pretty aggressively in a lot of situations. Um, obviously, you don't need to YOLO and be careless. I know the last battle I ran uh, alone, but it was that was mostly uh, kind of watching uh, what the battle makeup was. The, the fact that they had no reds uh, and the, the area I was at was going to let me hold down and hold them for the team if I did run into a bunch of heavies. So... Uh, instead, I can just use the DPM here and continue uh, working through these. Um, he's kind of an outlier, um, so he has the best chance to get some side shots if I'd moved up too far. So easy to go ahead and take care of him first. Uh, he's got a little tunnel vision going on, so uh, lets me get this out of the way. And again, a good bounce. If you're not aiming on this tank, uh, you're going to bounce off of it most likely. Uh, Shooting from the hip is not something you want to do against the 263. Like I said, it's I don't feel that it's OP because of the weak spots, um, but you definitely have to take the time and actually aim on it instead of just kind of shooting on the run, unless you're shooting, you know, like I said, at the sides or back. So um, plenty of weak spots, but plenty of ways to utilize it as well. Also, one of the only TDs, you don't have to be scared to run face-to-face -face into a medium. I, it's not as good as the Tier 9 counterpart as far as not being circled. The traverse speed isn't quite fast enough here that, that they can't circle you, but a good driver uh, is going to be able to, to mitigate that for the most part and not run into a lot of problems. So, again, because of the great DPM, that doesn't necessarily feel like a spectacular game, but because of the great DPM, uh, it really starts to, to build up damage fast, over 5,000 uh, and three kills uh, without, honestly, breaking too much of a sweat. So I love this tank a lot. If you uh, are not a fan of turretless TDs, this might be the one for you.